Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. Ambassadors. What is an ambassador? Mm-hmm. Um, the di- very good, Sue. I like that explanation. Um, the dictionary defines an ambassador as a diplomatic official of the highest rank, one who represents a sovereign, like a king, or a government, on a temporary mission. And I thought that that's a lot like us. We represent our Lord and Savior, the, the God of the universe, but we're on a temporary mission because this isn't going to be our job forever, right? Um, the word ambassador also means an authorized messenger or representative. And I think that that, that that term messenger is particularly apropos for us as Christians because we have a message to get out. That's what our Sabbath school lesson this, this quarter in particular is talking about is the message that we need to get out. So why? Why are we ambassadors? Because Jesus called us. And what would, what would he have us say? Well, an ambassador doesn't, doesn't put forth his own agenda, right? He does whatever the, the king or the government tells him to represent to the other country, right? And, and our God has told us to tell others who he is, right? So that's primarily our job. If we back up in chapter 5, we find the reason that that we would speak as as ambassadors, as the reason why we would represent Christ. Verse 14, For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. The love of Christ compels us. When Jesus touches your life, you want to share it, right? When, when, he, when he changes you, that becomes obvious, and that's a silent witness. But, but ambassadors, while they go and they sit in meetings a lot, they speak, they talk, they represent, and that's a very active thing to do. Verse 18 of chapter 5. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. The the terminology in this chapter is interesting because um, in some governments they have like the ministry of health, the ministry of finance, the ministry of of security, um, and and there's an ambassador as a part of that government as well. when I think about the ministry of reconciliation, it's the work of reconciliation, right? All things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And we know how he's done that because Jesus paid the, the price for our sin so that we can have a chance to, for, for eternal life. We can be restored. And that reconciliation where Christ brought us back um, and, and from the 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 moment that Adam and Eve sinned, his plan was put into effect, and he's been working on that reconciliation, that bringing back. But now he wants us to help reconcile the world to him. That doesn't sound, reconciliation doesn't sound like a forced process, is it? No. It's... It's wanting to. But can you force reconciliation on someone else? Not unless they're willing. No. Just like any, any treaty that's made, there has to be willing parties. Any contract that's, that's signed has to have willing parties. Reconciliation, that process of coming back together after being separated, and we know that sin has separated us from God, that process is consensual. 
And I, one of the, well, the most effective way to reconcile others to God is to tell what Jesus Christ has done in your life. Ephesians 6.20 says that, that, tells us that Paul considered himself an ambassador in chains. That, and that even, even despite those circumstances, he was literally under house arrest, he still considered himself to be an ambassador and able to do that work. Reconciliation at its heart is an invitation, an invitation to establish or return to a, a relationship with God, right? And, and God has taken the initiative in reconciliation by making it possible for us to be reconciled. Those who have accepted Christ become new creations. They've died through Christ and they are now a new creation and at peace with God. And that peace with God that you know, when I think about the work of ambassadors, they are often involved in trying to keep the peace. We want to share that, that peace that we now have in our relationship with God, that, that um, lack of antagonism because we're, work, we're walking in Christ's path. We want to share that with others, and that is the work of reconciliation. Yeah. Say that again. An ambassador will explain the power of their country and what it can do for others. Oh, that's a good. You're right. Uh, Mark just said for those that that are online, Mark said that ambassador explains the power of of the country that he represents and what that country can do for this other nation or this other people, and that's exactly what we should be doing. And, and that's part of that process of reconciliation. I think it's uh, um, amazing and, and um, without, without the power of the Holy Spirit, it would be a daunting task to reconcile others to God in that way. But we have to remember that, that Jesus Christ is the exclusive means of reconciliation. And so all we have to do is say what Jesus has done for us to represent who he is, what his power is, and what his plan is. Um, and that's the ministry of reconciliation. Ellen White tells us that, that God could have committed this work to the angels, but it's for our benefit that we do that, that, that we try to reconcile the world to God. And our, our reconciliation with God is, is, it's not possible to separate it from our reconciliation to each other. So, Every day in our everyday interactions that, that don't involve telling someone about Jesus, we can work on, on reconciliation by, by <clears throat> exemplifying Christ's character, by letting him live in us and acting like him. When we do that, when, when we are not creating divisions with others, when we are bringing together rather than splitting apart, when we're not labeling people or groups, we're, we're taking part in that ministry of reconciliation. When, and part of what Paul's concern was in 2 Corinthians 5 was that um, the people within the church needed to be reconciled to each other. Or there's no way that they could carry out that other work, their, their primary job, that ministry of reconciliation. How marvelous that God trusted us enough that he, and, and that he knew that his plan was, was, would give us the tools that we need to perform this work. Going back to chapter five. We'll start again at verse 14. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for, uh, for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. You know, being an ambassador is an all-in total commitment. You move to another country. The only piece of your of your sovereign soil that you're that you're on is the grounds of your embassy. It's you realize that you're in a foreign land, but you have a job to do. It's that reminds me of the the the, the phrasing here. They live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. It's a total commitment. This ministry of reconciliation. 
Verse 16, therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has, been, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. The power of God flowed through Jesus Christ, and that same power is available for us. It's that power that enabled Jesus to perform his work of reconciliation. And I'm not just speaking of the, his death on the cross, but his everyday life where he interacted with others. It was God the Father's power flowing through him. And we're promised that same power. That's the only way that we can accomplish this word of reconciliation. So as we go throughout this week, ambassadors for Christ. I'd like us to remember that we, were, we represent our king, our sovereign. And, and our words should be his words and none other. It's time to separate for our Sabbath school class. We have one class today, um, just the one here in the sanctuary, and we invite everyone to stay. And um, those that are watching online, if, if it tunes out for just a second, the live stream will be right back. Thank you. Right. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome once again to our Mount Pleasant Church Sabbath School and uh, with my cohort, Sister Denise Newhall. And of course, you all know my name is Leroy Barnes, hopefully. <laughs> but to those who may be online, who may be online for the first time, we are privileged to be co-teachers of the Adult Sabbath School at, here at Mount Pleasant Seventh Day Adventist Church. And we're going to continue on uh, with our, I call this, um, it, it's many things that it can be called, but the uh, three cosmic messages uh, which have uh, uh, eternal weight um, mm -hmm. and importance uh, to those of us particularly living uh, in these days. And yes. so welcome once again. Let's start our Sabbath school with prayer. Heavenly Father, we Invite the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to be with us as we read and as we study and as we interact and as we comment on the lesson. We pray that our hearts and minds will be open to um, what the Holy Spirit wants to teach us and to reveal to us and that we will um, take the message uh, of the good news of the gospel, not only to our family members, but to our friends, to our neighbors and all around the world. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Fear God and give glory to him. Fear God and give glory to him. What strikes your mind when you read fear God? Words have meanings, and sometimes the meanings of words morph over time, and they 
they go towards a certain place that maybe 300 or 400 or 1,000 years ago don't have the same exact meaning that they have today, or, or the emphasis is such that it sort of blurs what the intent of the original context of the word is, all right? And I'm saying that as a pretext to this fear. And uh, what's, what sort of things does that connote, fear? Reverence. Okay, reverence, all right? What, what else? I see Sue coming. I know that respect, respect is another one. Honor. Honor is another. Liberation. Amen. Most of us would go directly to fear as a being afraid. Yes. But this is totally different. Yes. Kind of a thing. That's right. For our God, it's total respect in every aspect. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Aww. you. Awe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wonder. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all the, these are all um, what, what's connoted here. And I, I, I saw where the lesson it talked about the word Phobe, which is, I think, P-H-O-B-E or something like that, from which we get the word phobia, our English word yeah. phobia. So, but he talks about that, that phobe is this what you all have described it, what's, what's intended here, awe, respect, reverence, that kind of thing. So let's get into the lesson. Um, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, Revelation 14, verse 12. Uh, Danish author Soren Kierkegaard told a parable about the end time. It went something like this. This is an interesting story to me. A fire broke out backstage in a big theater. A clown who had been part of the performance came out to warn the audience, get out, the place is on fire. The audience thought it was just a big joke, part of the show, that's all, and, and just applauded. He repeated the warning, get out, get out. But the more emphatically he warned them, the greater the applause. For Kierkegaard, that is how the world is going to end. That is, to the general applause of wits who believe it's a joke. Mm. The end of the world and events leading up to it are, as we know, no joke. We know it's no joke. The world faces the most serious crisis since the flood. In fact, Peter himself uses the story of the flood as a symbol of the end, warning that just as the world of old perished by water, in the end times, the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. I was thinking of a song that we used to sing, you know, it won't be water, but fire next time, right? It just alludes to this. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. This is 2 Peter 3, verse 10. Having been warned about what is coming, we now need to be prepared for it as well. So we know what's coming. The idea is that we don't have to be afraid of what's coming because God has made, through Jesus Christ, has made provision for us. But the fact, the fact is that what's coming is coming. That's a reality. But we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid, all right? Any, any thoughts that you wanted to add to that? Well, as we, as we move into Sunday's lesson um, and we read Revelation 14.7, it's significant to me that fearing God is linked to giving glory to him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because that's, that's the reason, and that tells us that that fear isn't the be afraid fear. That's right. But the respect and reverence fear. Mm -hmm. um, I had one, somebody once tell me that, that they, they, there were certain things that they reverenced, that mm -hmm. it wasn't just God, it was our nation, our flag. Mm -hmm. I would submit to you that, that you can really only reverence one thing. Only mm -hmm. one thing can be that special, that, that um, mm -hmm. unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and only God is holy. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems to me that when we link those concepts, fearing mm -hmm. God, reverencing him mm -hmm. and giving glory to him, we're really talking about that relationship between him and who he is to us. Um, Revelation, do you have 14, 7 there? Yes, I do. Can you read that? Sure. Saying with a loud voice, now there's a lot packed into this verse here, and we'll go through it. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth 
and the sea and the fountains of waters. Worship. Mm -hmm. Worship him, why? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I, I, I love mm -hmm. that our God never says, worship mm -hmm. me because I have all the power. Mm -hmm. He says, worship me because mm -hmm. I created you and I love you. Mm -hmm. and, and I want what's best for you. Mm -hmm. It's all tied together in this mm -hmm. verse. Mm -hmm. It's not at all about fear. It's, mm -hmm. it's all about um, who our God is mm -hmm. to us and mm -hmm. what our response to mm -hmm. him should be. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, let, me add, let me add this to the context here. You think about this world that John was living in at the time, this Greco-Roman society who had these beliefs, this pantheon of gods. So this is, they're, 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 they're ministering in the midst of that kind of ideology, right? So it's very important here. There's lots of gods, little g gods, whatever. But there's only one god who created the heavens and the earth and the seas and the fountains of waters. There's, there's no, there's no, not Zeus, not Thor, not any of that mythology. So it, this is very clear that we're talking about the true God. But, um, Paul said in Acts 17, I think it is, when he was preaching from Mars Hill, he said, you, hmm, you guys are, you guys have, I've gone through your temples and so forth in Athens, and I've seen what you have here. I mean, you have an inscription to the unknown God. Well, let me tell you about this unknown God, <laughs> that he, died, he, he lived and died and was crucified and buried and rose again. Um, so this, this, is a, this is John, this was revealed to him, and it's, it has that connotion that, look, this is no time to be studying and to be thinking about and having allegiance mm -hmm to false gods. Let's return. Fear God. Saying with a, and the saying with a loud voice, this is not something that we should just, you know, just quietly in the corner just say, well, you know, whatever. No, this is something to be, I think um, the Greek there is a, a word called annunciata, which is, um, it, it, when, we, when, when you have a, I think about this, and I don't want to get <laughs> hung up on this, but in, in, uh, in the power plant that, uh, or plants that I've worked in, in the control room, control rooms everywhere, they have what they call an annunciation panel. Mm -hmm. And what the annunciation panel is, is has inputs that come from all over the plant for different machinery mm -hmm. and so forth. And the annunciation panel, it's called annunciation panel or panel arm, is, is when something is, is out of kilter in, with a piece of machinery, a motor, a fan, or, or whatever, a pump, then... There's a light. Not only there's a light, it's flashing, and not only is it flashing, it's making a loud, audible sound. So the operator can get up now and go and, okay, there's so it's important. There's something that needs to be, uh, we need to pay attention to it. So that's saying with a loud voice, fear God, give glory to him. This is something that's very important that we, as a part of this remnant church, are called to message to give to the world. All right. Enough, enough, of, enough of that. Enough of my standing on my soapbox. I, I like the announcing <laughs> part. That makes sense. Yes, yes. Okay, so fear God here. Um, and this is, it says, read, um, and we just read it, the Apostle John's urgent end time appeal. Urgent. And it, see, the author uses the word urgent end time appeal in Revelation 14.7. And says, what the specific instruction does he give us? Well, again, fear God, give glory to him. And um, again, I'd mentioned that, um, that the word fear here in the Greek New Testament is, is phobeo, which is, the, which is what the lesson talks about. So, in light of this, what has been your own experience, uh, um, experience of fearing God? And I'll, I'll hold that, and then, um, Herbert, you have something that you'd like to pray. Well, Thinking of the contrast, mm -hmm. going back to your earlier point mm -hmm. of these other gods, mm -hmm. it wasn't just the fact that they were not on God's level, mm -hmm. but they had very limited realms. Like mm -hmm. it was a god of fire, god mm -hmm. of water, god mm -hmm. of, the, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they needed many gods because mm -hmm. they were puny. They, they had little sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have a creator God. And so that's what he's saying. We have to fear this God, reverence this God, respect this mm -hmm. God. Also, there's loyalty in that mm -hmm. and total surrender and submission in that. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so that is why, and he say, who created? And we give him glory. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's talking about worship, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A part of that is worship. Mm -hmm. Worship the creator. Um, and because judgment is come, so he, mm -hmm. he puts that is, which is a present uh, context. Uh, also what's in that worship who creator is the Sabbath commandment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's very similar language to mm -hmm. that. So the Sabbath commandment mm -hmm. is in that. So to keep it holy. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, it's just basically we've, we've said all that. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that Abraham and Isaac that that experience was a test for Abraham, mm -hmm. that the whole universe witness. Mm -hmm. So, because God is going to take sinners mm -hmm. to heaven, and you know the angels say, "Are you sure we're going to take these people up here with us?" Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. there's so we are actually like when he talks about we are a spectacle mm -hmm. before the universe. So Possibly. our reverence and keeping God holy. Mm -hmm contributes to the whole universe's mm -hmm. understanding who mm -hmm. God is as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's why the lesson is entitled, as you, this is a cosmic conflict. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not just an earthly conflict. The whole universe yes. is looking in. Angels mm -hmm. are looking in with interest on what has, 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 has happened and what is happening here. So, again, it has all these texts. Um, it said, see also Genesis 12, 22.12, Psalms 89.7, Proverbs 2.5, Ecclesiastes. All of these texts say fear God. If you were to look them up, fear God, fear God. So all throughout the Bible, it talks about fear God. And I'm, I'm struck by how close the wording is in Revelation 14 and Ecclesiastes 12. Mm -hmm. Let me just read these couple of verses. Mm -hmm. This is the end of Ecclesiastes. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So that this is not the first time that this warning has been given to mankind. Mm -hmm. Revelation is not the first time. It's been all the way throughout the Bible. And it's interesting to me that, that it's more urgent in Revelation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, a couple weeks ago, the, a light on my dashboard came on. It said, maintenance required. I was mm -hmm. 500 miles from my oil change. And it just would come on every time I turned on the car, then it would go off. And then as I got closer and closer, it would stay on longer and longer. And you get to a point where it stays on all the time, like, mm -hmm. look, look, yeah, look, dummy, you have to change your oil. Um, and this is kind of, the, the, the coal now is urgent. It's, it's not like it was back then, where mm -hmm. it was flashing intermittently. It's mm -hmm. flashing all the time mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. It's on permanently, and it's mm -hmm. saying, the hour of his judgment is come. Ecclesiastes refers to a future judgment. Mm -hmm. Revelation says it's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. I'm glad you brought up that text, Ecclesiastes 12. And I'll tell you, um, my grandfather, when he was um, at end of life, and he would, uh, different people would come in, my cousins that were living down there in Jamaica, or my parent, or my father, or other siblings, um, they'd, they'd talk with him, right? And they'd say, do you have any, you have any words of, of wisdom for us? Poppy Barnes, that was, that was my grandfather's name, Poppy Barnes. And um, he would quote, he, he quote mm. this text, let us hear the conclusion is that, mm. of the whole matter. Fear God, and, I mean, um, and give glory to him. And this is the text that he would repeat to people before he passed away. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it, it has special meaning to mm -hmm. me. This was at the sum of his 101 years, and he lived a life of faith and of wisdom and this is what he would give to people when he was on his deathbed. Yes. We have to live life with an awareness of yeah. the yeah. upcoming judgment. That's right. Mm -hmm. All it's mm -hmm. here, what we have here is not mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I like, uh, I think it's in Proverbs where it's, it talks about the council of holy ones. Mm -hmm. Just showing that there is, uh, there, are, there are watchers and holy ones. There, mm -hmm. there are other people mm -hmm. who are involved. The whole universe is involved with our salvation. Mm -hmm. And I like also what God said to Abraham. Mm -hmm. He said, now I know. Mm -hmm. Like God, mm -hmm. he knew before, but now mm -hmm. Abraham knows as well. And the That's universe right. knows mm -hmm. as well. Yes. He said, now I know that thou fearest God because thou hast not withheld 
yes. thine only son. That's right. You know, and when, mm-hmm. he, when he called him, he said, the son that thou lovest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just like that, that we are proving God's wisdom mm-hmm. and what he's invested in us, mm-hmm. but we're also proving things to ourselves, too, mm-hmm. when we're obedient to God. Mm-hmm. Very good. So the question down at the bottom, and, and you don't, this is something just to, 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 to take in and dwell on. It says, what has been your exper- own experience of fearing God, and how would you explain to someone in a positive way why the fear of God is something good? See, God has been, the, the character of God has been maligned. You know, if you do something wrong, God is going to zap you out of existence or whatever. That's, what, that's, what, that's the mindset of many people who are out there who don't want to have anything to do with God, that God is this autocrat, uh, this, this tyrant that is ready to just, just eliminate us. But that's not who God is. And so... That, that's, and that goes right with that, you know. That goes right with that ideology. So... We have a, a, an obligation. We know the goodness of God and what, who he is. We have, a, op, we have an obligation to uh, portray that to people that we, that we live around and live with and our family members. Well, yeah. We who know that, that the lies that Satan have, has told pull people away from God have, have an opportunity and, and the, the obligation mm-hmm. to bring their attention back to the, the God who loved the world so much that he gave his only yes. begotten son. yes. That that's the God. It's not, um, and I, and I agree with what you you've said here. Mm-hmm. I think that that when we fear God, we put Him first in our lives. Mm-hmm. We give Him our total alle- allegiance. Mm-hmm. That's it's really about allegiance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Very good. That's very good. Fearing and obeying. So now we now now the author is is we we, we we've kind of established. What the, what the real fear is, what true fear is, the respect and awe, um, let's link that now to the obeying. It says, what else does the Bible teach about what it means to fear God? And so I want to read a couple of these um, texts here. Deuteronomy 6.2 it says that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to, and this is the addition, to keep all his statutes and in his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, that thy days may be prolonged. Psalm 119, 73 and 74, thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments, that they that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in thy word. So there's this, connota- this, this context of now we move from respecting and fearing and honoring a God to obeying us. Jesus said, if you love me, Keep what? My Keep my commandments, you know? That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so again, um, and I want to go into saying this: that we 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 are not saved by our obedience. That's not that's in a, but we manifest God's love for us through our obedience. That's a, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay. So we've got to um, we've got to, and we're going to go on in other parts of the lesson to talk about this. There's this ideology that some people have that uh, once grace is exhibited, then they have no obligation to, to the law. Saved, yeah, once saved, always saved. Um, I'm covered by grace now, so the commandments are done away with. Well, no. Paul, Paul makes it very clear. No, he said, no, 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 no. This is not so. <laughs> so it, it's, part of, it's part of living for Christ and for God is to... Do what he asks us to do. Right. Mm-hmm. I think you were referring to Romans 6 where he said, does grace may void the law? Yes. God forbid. God forbid. <laughs> right, right. God forbid. <laughs> and we have to look at also that the angels and Satan lost their former abode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so he's not going to take us to heaven mm-hmm. with the rebellious spirit that they had. We're mm-hmm. not going to go to heaven doing what they did to get kicked out of heaven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we have to... Put that in perspective. Yeah. Put that in perspective. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the lesson itself says these passages underneath the, um, the text, these passages reveal a linkage between fearing God and keeping his commandments. Fearing God is an attitude of reverential respect that leads us to obedience. 
Heaven's urgent appeal is for those saved by grace, get this now, for those saved by grace to be obedient to God's commands. Grace does not free us from obeying the commands of God. The gospel sets us free from the law's... Con- this is what, I like this part of it where he says this. Mm-hmm. The gospel sets us free from the law's condemnation, not from our responsibility to obey it. It sets us free from the con- condemnation, yes, but sir. not from our responsibility to obey it. Okay. And, and we're given power to obey it. We're given that, power. That's what grace is. That's grace right. in yes. the Bible is not just unmerited favor. It's, it's also power. strength and power. Mm-hmm. That's right. Absolutely. Yes. I like the fact that um, we, it makes good sense Mm -hmm. to do what God wants us to do. Sure. He says, I'm going to prolong your days Mm -hmm. in the land that Mm -hmm. I promise you. I mean, that Mm -hmm. just makes good sense. Like, Mm -hmm. we're we're choosing life when we choose what God Mm -hmm. wants. Mm -hmm. When we go against God, we're choosing death. Mm -hmm. So it just makes sense (laughs) to walk in the ways. You know, they say, come, let's reason together. Mm -hmm. I'm offering you something that you can't do for yourself. (laughs) That's right. Yes. There's a text further on that goes right with what you're saying that I was just thinking about. And we used to to put the text to to words, to music. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, <laughs> acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's reasonable. Yeah. It's reasonable. <laughs> service to God is reasonable. No, you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. You guys break in the song anytime you want. That was good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is, this is why the Psalms, much of the Psalms mm-hmm. were put to music. That's and right. as people... People, people didn't have the, the, the technology that we have today. They had to put text to memory, right? They had to memorize them and internalize them. And the way that you can really, a lot of times, memorize and internalize those things is putting it to music, yep. putting it to music and singing. So, <laughs> so that's what we just touched and we're on a one accord there. Yeah. All right. So, I just wanted to touch on one more thing about, about um, does, does grace void the law? If you have any questions about that, read Romans. Read Romans. R- Romans 6, mm-hmm. verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Sin is transgression of the law. Mm-hmm. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound or be, or be greater? Right. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? God that, forbid. That's clear. God he goes, forbid. Certainly not. I mean, he, he's, yep. he, Paul is saying this. He said, he's saying, certainly not. You know, you, we're, we're not saved. To, 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 he's not, we're saved. <laughs> To exploit, yeah, to, ex- to exploit grace. I like the way you put that. We're not ooh, saved to ooh, exploit yeah. grace like that. No, no. We're to, to turn away. <laughs> Whenever Jesus healed someone uh, and, 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 and gave them assurance of forgiveness of, his, of, his, of their sins, he said, turn away, you know, from that and walk this path. Huh? What's it? He said, don't tell anyone. Okay. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't play on the devil's playground. We shouldn't turn back and just keep going in that direction. Now, in John says, if we sin, we have an advocate and so forth. But that doesn't mean we're supposed to, to ride the edge and stay on there and keep dabbling and keep... And keep. That's, that's playing with fire, you know? Well, what is the law really? The law is, is uh, an exposition of God's character. Mm-hmm. So does God's character not matter anymore? Right. His character can be summed up in, 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 as love. Mm-hmm. So does love not matter anymore? You're going to avoid love as well as, <laughs> as you know, your, your right. idea of the law? You, it's all connected. All connected, all connected. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, now that I'm saved, I'm going to do exactly what now, I want to do. Now we're right back to that allegiance concept. Mm-hmm. What's, what is most important? <laughs> Who has your allegiance? Right. If, it's, if you say that my allegiance is to myself, then your allegiance is actually right. to making, the enemy of our souls. You're making yourself the God, right? Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Anything more about fearing and obeying God as we move along here? Anything mm-hmm. else you want to highlight? Living, okay, so now we live a God-centered life. Remember... What who, who Satan became. He became very self-centered. Isaiah 14. Hmm. He was the man who had the eye problem. 
I will ascend to the, to, the, to, the, to the north side of the mountain. I will put my throne above the gods of heaven. I will, I think he says, it repeats I there about, about what's that, how many times? I, I thought it was about seven times he repeated it there, but it, his, whole, his whole thrust was about himself. And what God's thrust is for us to live a Christ-centered life. Christ didn't even didn't live for himself, you know. God and the Holy Spirit are here to, you know. Um, he, had he, he had the right to. He had the right to. That's right. That's right. That's right. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. Living a God-centered life. Matthew uh, 6.33. It says here, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Colossians 3, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things of earth. And I'm thinking of the, there's a, we have a singer in our, who sings, um, Set your affection on things above. He sang at the, um, oh, I can't remember what his name is, but I just love to hear him sing this song, Set your affection on things above. Um, and then Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, um, we, were t- we were talking about before that, the heroes, heroes of the hall of faith, right? Yeah. All right? We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We have a glorious future. Fix your eyes on that. Keep your eyes on the prize and on that glorious future. Don't be so caught up in, um, uh, in worldly things that will take your focus off of what Jesus and what God is offering to us. Okay, Live our lives in a, in a, in a God-centered way by Serving others, right? Jesus said, if you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. In Matthew 25, it talks about the sheep and the goats, the right hand and the left hand. He's saying, listen, you know, um, that's the criteria of our ministry. Serve other people, and, 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 and then you're serving me. So the central issue in this earth's final conflict is the battle for the mind. That's, that's the key point here. It really is one of allegiance, and you talked about this, Denise, authority and commitment to God's will. So who, who is our allegiance going to be to? If we, if we make it all about ourselves, then our allegiance isn't to God. Our allegiance has to be to God. Look at those three texts. Mm-hmm. They, they instruct us to seek first, mm-hmm. seek, seek, seek first the kingdom of God, seek the things above, set your mind on the things above. Mm-hmm. Lay aside every weight. These are decisions. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. all begins in the mind. It begins in this, the mind. All of these things. It's all talk about our choice. Um, mm-hmm. Joshua, choose you this day whom mm-hmm. you will serve. Mm-hmm. God, and I think it's Deuteronomy, I set you before you life and death, choose life. Is that mm-hmm. Deuteronomy? I yes, think. Deuteronomy, yes. And it's, it's all, it all begins with our choice. And then he empowers us to do that. That's he empowers, right. But we have to make that choice. We have mm-hmm. to commit that. Mm-hmm. When it says, seek first the kingdom of God, it means stop seeking the other stuff. Mm-hmm. When, when he says, set your mind, that, that is a, an intentional Intentional, act. intentional, intentional. I like, I like that word, intentional. That's right. And the text in Matthew says we don't have to be worried about all these other things mm-hmm. because he said he's going to add everything that's needful mm-hmm. in life to you. So mm-hmm. you don't have to be mm-hmm. cumbered about like Martha. Mm-hmm. You can sit at the feet of Jesus because mm-hmm. he says, if you seek me first, I'm going to add these other things mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. And so that, mm-hmm. that, again, is reasonable. Perspective, right? It, yes. All right. All right. Uh, Ellen White says in, in a book called the, This Day with God, mm-hmm. every soul must daily seek the Lord with full purpose of heart, morning, noon, and night, and let the mind dwell upon the word of God to understand his requirements mm-hmm. daily. Mm-hmm. It's an intentional act mm-hmm. that we have to continue. Mm-hmm. There's an interesting psychological phenomenon called propinquity. Okay. okay. 
And it's the more you are with someone, mm -hmm. the more you become like them. Mm -hmm. And even to the point that sometimes married couples, people will say after they've been married for a long time, oh, you guys look alike. Mm -hmm. And they've done studies on that. Mm -hmm. I submit the more that we stay in God's word, mm -hmm. the more we will become and display his characteristics mm -hmm. to other people around us. Absolutely. So I, I think that's a, a key element mm -hmm. in this whole thing right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to stay close. Mm -hmm. We have to become like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can only do that by knowing him more and mm -hmm. more and more. Mm -hmm. and, and when we do that, when, when that is our focus mm -hmm. on getting to know God and, mm -hmm. and remaining close mm -hmm. to him, we kind of by default are keeping the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry so much about, am I breaking the commandments? Mm -hmm. Our minds are with his. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and it's, he, he fills us with his power mm -hmm. to, to keep walking in the way that he mm -hmm. set before us. It's, mm -hmm. it's not, we make it harder than it needs yes. to be. We, do, we make it harder than what it needs to be. The text in mm -hmm. Hebrews says Jesus is the author mm -hmm. and the finisher. And when we live for him, like that. we are, as we become more and more like him, we become a better and better witness for him. I told, mm. I just take, tell this story real quick. I, I met, probably mentioned it some time ago, but when I was small, I remember my, my father and um, other um, conference workers at the Lake Region Conference that I grew up in would go up and they would do camp pitch. They would pitch the tents that people would stay in. They would clean up the grounds and so forth and so on. Um, and there was an electrician who, who was not Adventist that asked to come and to work to help and so forth. And um, just over time, this, this person, this individual, looking at the lives of the people that were there and what they did, and he said, man, you know, I'm, I'm with all of these people up here. No swearing, no cursing, no drinking, no, you know, it's just the, just the witness of the lives of the people. And he decided, you know what, I want to become a part of this. I'm going to join, the, and, he, and he did, and he became a, um, a faithful um, follower of God. So... We're going to get into that part about being the temple. We are, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? So we have that, that obligates us to try to take care of our temple in the best way that we can because we're, we're, being, we're witnesses for God, right? Okay. And before we get to the bodily temple, let's talk about the temple of your mind. Yes, yes. Um, and, and Philippians 4.8 gives us the recipe on how to stay on track. Finally, mm -hmm. brethren... Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, mm -hmm. whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Mm -hmm. Look yes. at everything that that excludes. Yes. So if you, if you follow that, mm -hmm. you're, you're really, it sets mm -hmm. you right on the right path. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you exclude the things that don't qualify for mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. then... You're already following mm -hmm. Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, what a lovely, lovely thought to add there. Thank you for that. Um, so, giving glory to God. All right? Giving glory to God. Let us take a look at... Um, okay, I'll just read the first part. A study of the use of the phrase in the Old Testament to give glory to God shows that it, interestingly enough, oft, often appears in the context of divine judgment. Just as it does in the first angel's message as well. This idea is seen too in Revelation 19, 1 and 2. Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to our Lord, belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. Okay? So it's linked. Um, like, um, like Denise has said, it's linked. That's right. That's right. Because it represents character. Okay? So. Um, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, um, it says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? All right? We, we're the temple, uh, temples of God, right? This Holy Spirit comes when we ask him to and to infiltrate. That's what we ask him to do that in, in the study of the Word, right? So infiltrate our minds mm -hmm. and our hearts and our very souls. Um, if, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple, this is how, that's how serious this is. Mm -hmm. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. 
The temple of God is holy, right? The temple is where God dwells. So if he's dwelling in us, then we ought to live holy lives. We ought to um, walk according to his commandments to us, right? We have to think of it that way. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. God has, Jesus shed his blood. What price can you put on that? You can't put any price on that, right? <laughs> and it, it echoes Revelation 14, 16, about mm. giving glory to God. Mm-hmm. That's right. And then here, we have the one, last one here, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whatsoever you eat or you drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. It makes a difference. Um, if we're living for God and we're living for Christ, then we will honor ourselves and our bodies, right? And we won't defile them. Mentally, that we are mental, physical, and spiritual beings. And so it's not even just talking about, it's not even what, talking about what we consume, what we eat. Guard the avenues to the soul. That's what the um, spirit of prophecy. So everything we see, put aside those things which are unprofitable to us or lewd and, 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 and profane. Put that aside, you know? Whatever we consume, our senses, our taste, our touch, our smells, and so forth. Just or how much we consume. Oh, how much? I can't think that well after a huge meal. That's right. Can you? Mm-hmm. Just like I can't run a marathon after a huge meal. That's right. Anything that dulls our senses, that makes ah. it harder for God to communicate with us, we need to set aside. And, and we as Adventists, we, we, and, it, and rightly so, we talk about mm-hmm. the mind-numbing um, mm-hmm. qualities of things like alcohol mm-hmm. and drugs, mm-hmm. but sugar yep. and, and just eating too much is, actually dulls our minds. That's right. You know, gluttony... Gluttony is mm-hmm. condemned in the Bible. That's and right. there's a reason why. Because God mm-hmm. speaks to us through our conscience. And if, right. our, if our minds are clouded, mm-hmm. not just with substances, but mm-hmm. with too much of what mm-hmm. we would call an acceptable thing, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. that intemperance mm-hmm. um, actually pulls us away from God mm-hmm. because he can't speak as effectively to mm-hmm. us and he can't use us as effectively. Thank you. Thank you for bearing that out. And that, that is very important, what you, what you talked about there. Yeah, we, sometimes, sometimes we have this uh, accusing finger, if you will, and we, we point to the things that we, that, are, that we know that we shouldn't do. But some of those same things that we think are acceptable are unacceptable because we go to them in excess. Mm-hmm. You know, sugar, <laughs> maybe flour. <laughs> but, there are a lot of addictions inside alcohol. That's right, absolutely. Mm-hmm. A lot, you're right. And there's a lot of things that... Um, People take on. People have addictions to all kinds of things, not just food. People, people have addictions to um, illicit sex. People have addictions to um, gambling. People have addiction to embezzling money. There, there's all kinds of things that people have addictions to. You know? mm-hmm. There are, <clears throat> pardon me. There are all kinds of things people are addicted to, and and sometimes the good things mm-hmm. that people do, like exercise mm-hmm. or extreme dieting. Yeah. Are these other things are just as bad. Mm-hmm. God asks us to be reasonable balanced. and be balanced. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you for that. And self-control, those principles are really mm-hmm. key. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, that's bound up in that. I was just thinking it's bound up and and Amy was talking about the eight laws of health when she spoke last Sabbath, you know. Um, new start, which I like, nutrition, exercise, water, you know, um, sunshine. But nowhere are we told to focus on one and ignore That's the right. others. That's right. That's right. It's a, it's a whole holistic package. Anyway, so we give, we give glory to God by honoring our, honor, honoring our bodies, honoring our minds, honoring our, our spirits. You know. That's right. That's right. Okay. All right. Um, we're moving quickly because um, the time. Oh, we have, we have some time. All right. But we're moving quickly. <laughs> Anything more about giving glory to God? Down at the bottom, it says, think about what you do with your body. What can you do to make sure that you are indeed glorifying God with it? So, Romans 12, 1 and 2? Yes. Yes. I can read that. Yes. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you by the mercies of God. So it's not even through our power. Right. right. That you present your bodies. Once again, it's a choice. You present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what it is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So how do I um, be transformed by the renewing of my mind? There's only one thing that really renews my mind, and that's time with God in, in study of his word and prayer. That's what renews my mind. By beholding, we become changed, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. See, Eric and I, we, we owe you the second verse. We didn't even sing the second verse. We just sang the first one, right? <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. But we, we can't transform ourselves. No, we that's cannot. We to that's right, mm -hmm. that's right, that's right, right. By the mercies of God. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. Very good, 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 good comments. Thank you. All right. Um, revelations overcomers. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith mm -hmm. of Jesus. This is a depiction. John says this is a the description mm -hmm. of those who are living in this, in this end times and who are aligning themselves with, um, with God's uh, commandment keeping people. Yes, Jillian. <laughs> When you talk about faith, mm -hmm. um, there's a, I don't know if I've said this before, but there's a lady where I live at the apartments, and she doesn't believe in God, mm -hmm. and she asks a whole bunch of questions, and there's a lot of things I don't understand, so I just told her I just have to have faith. You know, I can't answer those questions, but faith in Jesus and, you know. <laughs> You yes. know, even, even faith is a gift. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, one, one of the, I can't remember who said this, they said this to Jesus, I believe, help me with my unbelief. unbelief. Yes. And I think that that's a really powerful prayer to say, I do believe, mm -hmm. but I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, and we don't talk about struggling with doubt very much in, mm -hmm. in our, yes. our contemporary society and even in this church. But God says, bring this to me. Bring to me whatever is troubling you. Mm -hmm. and, and I will help renew your mind. Mm -hmm. yes. And I will give you the faith that you need. Yes. Do we think that Jesus didn't answer that man's prayer? I believe, help me with my unbelief. Of yes. course he answered he that his son. prayer. Yes. 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 I like the fact that Abraham was a friend of God mm -hmm. because he believed God and God mm -hmm. counted to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Faith is how we become friends with God mm -hmm. because you try, have to trust your friend. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like me, I would just remove all doubt, and you wouldn't. But you don't need faith if there are no doubts. Mm -hmm. But faith gives us access to God in a way we would not have access to Him mm -hmm. without faith. Mm -hmm. That's why faith is going to always be be there. In that first text in Hebrews, it says, hold fast your profession in Jesus, mm -hmm. the Son of God, our high priest. Mm -hmm. And he letting you know that you're holding fast to your high priest who's a human in heaven. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he, and the, reason, the reason he can be a high priest is that he can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Mm -hmm. He knows who we are. I think we talked about this another thing. And he says, we, we will find grace to help in time of need. Mm -hmm. So our faith leads us to find the grace we need mm -hmm. in the time of need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how we can make it. Mm -hmm. Because we can't, we can't stop ourselves from mm -hmm. going headlong mm -hmm. in, in the way we're traveling. Mm -hmm. Only God can do that for us. Mm -hmm. I like the text. That's, I think that's 725. He said he's able to mm -hmm. save to the uttermost, those that come mm -hmm. to God by him. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's really the answer mm -hmm. to every prayer, really. Mm -hmm. Praying is the answer, mm -hmm. as uh, Denise said mm -hmm. earlier. You know, we pray. Mm -hmm. Prayer is it. Praying. I mean, just talk to God. Mm -hmm. And he ever lives 
to make intercession for us. So we have someone who's always fighting the battle. Mm -hmm. When we are about without strength, mm -hmm. he's still fighting for us. Mm -hmm. It's his joy to do that. It's his joy. Yes. It's his joy. And, and, you know, wrapped up in that is this whole talking about intercession. He's the only one who has the right yes, to do that, right? Yes, right. Yes, right. Because he right. yes. is the son of God. Mm -hmm. He is the son of man, and you know, and he died for our sins. Yes. Not even... God the Father can do that, yes. what he did. Or not even the Holy Spirit can do that. How Jesus. That that's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. I was reading in um, Desire of Ages this week, and it says, Through faith we receive the grace of God, but faith is not our Savior. Mm -hmm. It earns nothing. That's right. It is the hand by which we lay hold on Christ and appropriate his merits, the remedy for our sin. And we cannot even repent without the aid of the Spirit of God. Repentance comes from Christ just as surely as does pardon. Mm -hmm. The Faith is the mechanism to grab onto Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's why when we say, I believe, help me with my, my unbelief, we're telling God, I'm struggling to hang on to you. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in being real in your prayers. Mm -hmm. I believe in laying in... in uh, Jesus said... Bring, bring to me the things that are troubling you. You read the Psalms. How, how is David a man after God's own heart? Because he poured out his heart. Mm -hmm. when, when you're discouraged or depressed or angry, you need to take that to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it tied along with it, just going back to the title of the lesson, Revelations Overcomers. How can we overcome? How can we be the overcomers? Mm -hmm. It's because Jesus overcame. Yes, right. And because Jesus overcame and we grasp hold of him and his righteousness, yes, right. we overcome. <laughs> this is the whole thing. We link and align ourselves with what Jesus did for us. Then because he overcame, we overcome. Mm -hmm. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank God Somehow for Jesus. I suspected she was going to say that. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> It says right in the lesson here in the, in, the, in, the, in the paragraph that's underneath the read, it says, Jesus, the divine son of God, has overcome the wiles of the devil. It didn't say he's overcoming. He has overcome the wiles of the devil. He faced temptations, trusting in the promises of God. Can you imagine? He's God himself, but he trusted in the promises of God. Surrendering his will to the Father's will and depending, upon, depending on the Father's power. Trusting him, looking to him, believing in him, we too can be victorious. Jesus wins, right? Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus is our all in all. And the three angels' messages are all about him. Revelation's message is one of victory, not defeat. It speaks of a people who through his grace and by his power overcome. And they overcame by the blood of the lamb. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read you two verses. Yes. The first is from John 16. John 16, verse 33. This is Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Yes. It's one of my favorite texts. <laughs> Revelation 17, 14. Where Deep in the book of Revelation this quarter. Mm -hmm. Revelation 17, 14 tells us, if I can get there. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For he is, king of, he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Mm -hmm. He's overcome. Mm -hmm. We follow the overcomer. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and because of that, his victory is our victory. Yes. His, his strength is our strength. We don't have to come up mm -hmm. with this stuff on our own. Mm -hmm. And thank God for that. Mm -hmm. um, his, when it says, come boldly to the throne of grace mm -hmm. that, that you may obtain mercy, mercy. And, and find grace to help in time of need. need. That's pretty practical. Mm -hmm. yes. Not mercy and grace to help in time of need. Mm -hmm. That's talking about that mm -hmm. power, that That's grace right. is power. That's right. That's right. And the thing is, is that there are momentous things that are even ahead of us. If, if, we, if, we, if we are living in this world right now, um, in the final hours of Earth's history, there are momentous things that are ahead of us. Um, and so 
when we, when we have this, this understanding that God, that Jesus, that we can put all of our trust and our confidence and faith in him, then those things, these things that are, we don't have to live in fear for the future. You know, people have, many people, ministers and so forth, have, um, have relayed the, or, or conveyed this message as one that we need to be fearful about, that God is need to be fearful. I, I, was, I was thinking of... Um, is it um, that uh, this uh, minister, and you all know his name, that um, sinners in the hand of an angry God, right? Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edwards, right? And he talks about, you should read that someday, talks about how we're dangling over the, the, the flames of hell, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And, yes, right, right, right. The sermon was about a spider being mm-hmm. hung over a fire. Yes, yeah, and all of that. It, again, if, if that, that, that doctrine of eternal hell is one that is most vile to me, how can you think, how can you think a God of love can be roasting somebody for all eternity? It makes God worse than a monster. It makes God to be worse than a monster. That is, and that is most... Um, it, it, Satan told the lie. That he, told, yes, he said that God is who Satan actually is. That's right. Mm-hmm. He's, he's imputed to God. He's, mm-hmm. he's tried to get everyone to buy into the idea that God is who the devil actually is. That's right. That's right. And, um, and so once we, once we as we're, you're saying, we're, we're, gonna, we're studying Revelation, you know, which is what we're going to do this entire quarter uh, in the context of other scriptures of the Bible... Revelation is good news because what is it about? It's about Jesus, and it's about the Jesus who saves, and it's about the Jesus who forgives, and it's about the Jesus who cleanses, and it's about the Jesus that restores us. All of that is bound up in Revelation's message. Don't worry about the the beast and the image. These are symbols. Focus on the lamb. Focus on the lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. Powerful. Matthew twenty one twenty two. All right. It's good to share these these things. Matthew twenty one twenty two. Okay. Matthew twenty one twenty two. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's where the faith comes in. Mm-hmm. And we're to, we're to exercise that every day, you know. We don't just have faith for one time or for one moment, for one instance. We should exercise it each day, every day. It's like water. There's just so much of it you can store in your body. You've got to keep replenishing it. You've got to keep replenishing um, it. The living water has to be replenished daily. Daily. Yes. Daily. This, this restoration is like, Beyond anything we can imagine, you know, eyes have not seen, you know, ear have not mm-hmm. heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things God has provided for us. But we do have a glimpse when he says, uh, beloved, now are we the sons of God? Mm-hmm. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, mm-hmm. but we know that when we see him, we're going to be like him, mm-hmm. because we're going to see him as he is. The fact that we're going to be like Jesus, you know, say we're going to have Bodies like his glorious body. Mm-hmm. The restoration, I think our prophet says that we're going to be what we would have been if sin never existed. Mm-hmm. And it's just, that's mind boggling. That's right, that's right. Everything is going to be restored to what it was supposed to have been before the fall. Everything. And there will be no trace, no taint of sin throughout the universe forever and evermore. <laughs> um, no, no memory of the former things, all right? Oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to contain my excitedness. <laughs> but, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the new Jerusalem, I'm telling you. We, we, we have a few minutes here, and we, I don't think we've ever gotten to the discussion no. questions before. No, no, we haven't. You know? um, and this is on Friday. It says, think about the incredible power of God, the one who created and sustains the entire cosmos, we can barely grasp the idea of the cosmos <laughs> and how big it is, right? 
<laughs> how then could we even begin to grasp the creator of it? Think about how much greater and vaster and more powerful he is than we are. And this God will one day judge us. How do these facts help us understand the idea of the fear of God and what it means? All right? Some questions to just contemplate. You know, God is so great. This is, this is one that I like here. How can we avoid legalism when we discuss the biblical concepts of holiness, overcoming, and victory? How, do, how, how can we avoid legalism? We don't live these lives or do these things in order to be saved. We live for Christ because he has saved us. Uh, because Satan is a defeated foe. Mm -hmm. you know, Jesus said it is finished on the cross, which means he got the victory. So what we're doing is claiming his victory mm -hmm. over sin, Satan, death, the grave, you know, mm -hmm. hell. You know, he's got all, every victory possible. That's right. Now, in this life... It is my blood, my mm -hmm. sweat, my mm -hmm. tears, mm -hmm. my crying. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I realize I haven't done anything mm -hmm. because all glory goes to Jesus mm -hmm. because he gives me strength to do everything. And mm -hmm. it's, I'm surrendering to his sweet will at all times. So we avoid legalism when we realize the context mm -hmm. of our labor. Mm -hmm. We're working because we're in relationship with God, mm -hmm. but it doesn't earn us any merit. It doesn't earn us any right. merit. The victories already have been won. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. That's right. Very, very good. I think we avoid legalism when we focus on Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, when in the wilderness, when the, that bronze snake was lifted up, mm -hmm. um, do you remember that everyone had to look at, look at the, mm -hmm. the Savior and yeah. live? And Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw, draw all, all men, men to me. me. Mm -hmm. and, and we think that that's, I think we tend to think of that as in the context of initially coming to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But I think it's continual. Mm -hmm. when, when we constantly focus on him, we're mm -hmm. constantly drawn to him. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. I think the biggest key in how to keep from legalism is our motivation. Mm -hmm. Are we doing this? Mm -hmm. Am I doing this because of the fact that I have to do it because of the fact that if I don't do it, then I'm going to be hurt or mm -hmm. I'm going to recent punishment? Mm -hmm. Or do we do it because of the fact that Jesus loved me mm -hmm. first? Mm -hmm. um, Casting Crowns has a song. It's called um, Love Move First mm -hmm. or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. And talking about the fact that I am able to move and able to draw closer to him because of his love for me. And once we see that, mm -hmm. it changes our motivation. It changes why mm -hmm. we're doing things. It changes how we see things. Mm -hmm. Sure, okay, I can keep the Sabbath and it can be a drudgery or I can be able to say, thank God for Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Because if not, like, I'd never have time to stop. Mm -hmm. Just go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. But having that time to stop. And it's like, okay, I'm not doing this because of forced oppression mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a gift it's a, it's a treasure mm -hmm. it's just that that beauty that is jesus mm -hmm. the sabbath was made for man and not man for the sabbath yes. we get it twisted sometimes we get mm -hmm. we get we think it's our merits that earn us our salvation or the things that we do uh there's a parable that kind of encapsulates it the older son and the prodigal son story he was doing it because he thought his works earned merit. He said, I've, you know, I've done all of these things from my youth up, and uh, you didn't even give me a, a goat. And yet for this son, you've killed the fatted calf. Mm -hmm. The thing is, his father had to remind him, you're with me all the time, and all that I have is yours. Mm -hmm. If we're in the family of God, all that he has is ours. We're not working for merit. We're, this is just house rules, you know, I... I I just do my part, you know, and God has asked me if I love him, I'm going to live a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're not doing it to be saved. And that's what the, uh, the, the older son in that prodigal son story, mm -hmm. he thought that his works was earning him merit. And mm -hmm. the father said, no, mm -hmm. you're with me all the time mm -hmm. and all, all that, that I have, I have is yours. And so we have to realize all that God has is ours. Mm -hmm.
already. That's right. He's promised it to us. That's right. So we're not trying to earn salvation. <laughs> right. Right. We're just living in relationship. And all relationships have certain expectations. Yes. Yeah. But that ongoing relationship also has rewards. Yes. yes. The, the peace that passes understanding, yes. for instance. Yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. Very good discussion. Come, come, come. <laughs> I have a, she's 38-year-old daughter. We used to go to the Episcopal Church. She was baptized Seventh-day Adventist. Um, she became Muslim. And then she and her husband don't understand God because they think he's mean. So now they become pagan. So when, it, when you're either hot or cold, you have more of a chance to get to them right. God does, yes, no. What was your question again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah formulate that again. <laughs> okay. Um, when we're lukewarm, God ha it's harder to reach them, but if they're either cold or hot, mm. God yes. has more of a chance. They has, they mm -hmm. don't, you don't see your need when right. you're lukewarm. Right, right, right. That, exactly. That's the danger there. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have situations, especially in our families, mm -hmm. of of people that were, we really would like to see saved. Yes, yes. You know, and, yeah. and, and that's the love of Christ in, mm -hmm. in you seeking to, mm -hmm. to draw them. Mm -hmm. And the best way that you can do that is, is by your everyday witness. Mm -hmm. um, and, and continuing to pray for them. And continuing to pray. Mm -hmm. what, what you do means more than what you say. Mm -hmm. And showing them the character of God through your actions is key. Yep. And, and always pray. Yep, always. All right. Thank you for your for yeah, participation. Say, That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. All right. Denise, can you just sure. pray Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we're so grateful for this time together. Thank you for this wonderful Sabbath school lesson. And, and I ask that you would pour out a blessing on each one who's been here in person or who's watched online. Lord, just continue to draw us closer to you and help us to claim that victory. Your victory is ours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs>